Hello and welcome to Weekly Dev Tips. I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. our Dallas. This is episode 29 on using a shared kernel as a package with your applications. Don't forget to follow Weekly Dev Tips on Twitter, as well as in your favorite podcast app. Please leave a review on Twitter or wherever you're listening to the podcast. I'd like to get at least as many reviews as there are episodes, and so far, we're pretty far behind on that count. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. If you've written more than one application or worked for a company that has more than one, you've probably shared code between the applications. There are a variety of approaches to this, and one of the most awful being the one solution to rule them all approach, in which every bit of code ever written is added to a single code repository and a single solution file. One or more projects in this solution become the shared projects used by many different applications. The benefit of this approach is that developers can easily view and even debug all of the code possibly used by anything. Changes that might break dependent projects are often discovered quickly. However, if a single project requires an update to shared code, it's not easy to have one project depend on a different version of the shared library than another. Even if you use more than one solution, if you're sharing code between multiple solutions at the file system level, you're probably in the same boat. In domain-driven design, there's this idea of a shared kernel. The shared kernel is code that more than one bounded context depends upon. The contract between the shared kernel code and its dependence is that the shared kernel code doesn't change unless all downstream dependencies agree with that change. Often it's going to be one team maintaining the shared kernel and its dependent projects, in which case this is pretty easy. But in larger organizations, there may be an approval process involving several teams. When updates do occur, they should be decoupled from dependencies such that they can pull in the update when they're ready. This enables updating the shared kernel code without having to test and update every downstream dependency immediately. In .NET, one way to gain the ability to have dependent projects pull in the latest updates to the shared kernel whenever they're ready is to use a NuGet package. Anytime an update is made to the shared kernel, its package should be updated and its version updated. For example, you might initially have acme.sharedkernel version 1.0.0, which two projects, A and B, reference. Project A needs some additional functionality, and it's agreed that it should be placed in the shared kernel. Therefore, a new package is published with version 1.0.1. Project A updates its version of the package to require 1.0.1, and it's ready to be deployed. Project B continues to depend on version 1.0.0 and can also continue to be developed or even deployed using this version. Project B can choose when and how often to update to a newer version of the shared kernel package. If you follow this approach, there are a few things that you may find helpful. First, use continuous integration for your shared kernel library. When you make updates to it, the automated build should compile it, run the tests, yes, it should have tests, and then update its version number and publish it, assuming that it builds and all the tests pass. This ensures you have a consistent process, which is especially important when you're talking about deploying versioned packages. Next, you'll want to have a way to share the package between your developers and build machines. One nice thing about NuGet is that any file share can serve as a NuGet server, so at a minimum, you can simply drop version nupkeg files, yes, that's how you say N-U-P-K-G, into a particular file share. Alternately, you can use an actual NuGet server, such as one built into JetBrains Team City or VSTS, now called Azure DevOps, or you can use a cloud-based solution like MyGet if you prefer. In any case, you simply need a way to distribute your shared version packages. With these fairly small pieces in place, you should find that you're able to decouple your shared kernel package from its dependence such that you can make updates to it as required and pull in those updates only as needed by each dependency. You should also find that being a separate solution with a separate automated build, it's less likely that your developers will make cavalier changes to the shared kernel. So it should become more stable by default and should only be updated when truly needed by its downstream dependents. And of course, you should do whatever you can to minimize the things your shared kernel depends on, since it's going to be dependent on by most of your applications and these dependencies are transitive. If your shared kernel depends on it, everything depends on it. So keep it lightweight 
and don't depend on anything from it that you can avoid. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time on weeklydevtips.com.